Do you share an underlying philosophy? Is there, is there an underlying approach that the lyrics of the songs seem to indicate uh, strong negatives uh, in, in terms of religion, in terms of... Boredom. Um, um, not being able to communicate with our parents. Um, not being able to communicate with other people who may not just be just like us. You know? Um, also, um, a lot of us are against you know, drugs and alcohol. And a lot of different things because we've seen our parents be destroyed by those things. We want to change that. Okay. Yes. I don't think the messages are necessarily negative. There's some negative ones, but there are also some very positive ones. I think we're some of the only forms of music that have dealt with things like racism and kids keeping straight, no drugs, no alcohol, because it's if you're always stoned, no one's going to take you seriously. Hey, so uh, do we have a division here? Are there people who are serious punks and, and people who are into it for a while, or what? <laughs> what? Yes. Um. Yes, Bart. <laughs> well, that's what it says. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, I have Biff over there. <laughs> um, I think there's a big difference between what people see on the streets, like the people we saw that fashioned. Mm -hmm. Those people could be considered maybe like weekend punks which get their little costumes on and go off to the spit and dance and call themselves punks and think they're real cool, but in, in fact, all it is is fashion and looking feminine. Now, you look at me, I'm, I'm not exactly wearing, you know, things to hype up. I'm a girl. I'm not wearing makeup. And, you know, that's a, a big point is people want to be real, and I, that's why I don't dress like that. They're, and I hate the confusion when people call me new wave and things, because I, I really hate that kind of dressing and I'd hate to be coded as New Wave. You're just yourself. Right. Okay, we're taking your calls, incidentally, at 723-5124, 723-5124. If you observe from afar, we're taking a close-up look. And like many things, when we close in on a general overview, we find many differences among people and styles. Um, why, do you think, why do you think people react so strongly to you, Christine? I mean, for instance, what's your parents' response to Christine uh. Punk? They don't like it at all. Most people, I think, get a negative attitude because it's something different, and a lot of people can't accept things that aren't, you know, that they're not used to. Okay, what's your lifestyle like? What do you do? Are you a student, a musician, what? Um, no, I, I, I'm not a student. I, I have a full-time job, and I work, and I go to a, a gig now and then, and I go home. You know, I'm just a regular person. The way I dress doesn't make me, like, different in my own way, you know? It's just, I think it's, people take it so strongly because they're afraid, more or less, of people who look like us, maybe, or who have our attitude. What is your attitude, though? That's what I keep asking, and I'm not sure that I'm getting uh, an answer. I thought uh, I yes, you want to, uh, you want to take a run at that one? Yeah, it's just, um, it's a lot of things. The whole, the whole movement is really youth-oriented, and a lot. That's why a lot of older people can't, can't relate to everything we're saying or anything we're saying. We're, we're bored. We don't have anything to do. Um, the young people have no say in anything that goes on in society, but we're going to be the first ones to get drafted to El Salvador and fight for Ronnie, you know, and fight for nuclear bombs. And uh, we, like, I, I wear these X's on my hands mm -hmm. to show that I'm not living in the 60s anymore. You know, I'm, I'm straight edge, which means that I don't have to, like, take drugs. I don't have to cop out. I can, I can listen and look at the world and see, like, all the problems that are all over the place, you know, you know raci racism, nuclear war, things we've talked about before, and Ronald Reagan being elected by a landslide. I mean, I think that's the worst thing. That that's just says so much bad about America. Okay, yeah. that's a political statement. What do you hope to do with, with your statement? How would you like to see things change? How do you hope to change it? Uh, I mean, the whole thing, you know, I don't think it'll, it'll ever change the world, but I, I'm still going to do what I can to change it. And, like, if I can get, if I dress this way, and I get one kid interested in what he sees, and he asks about it, and he finds out what I'm saying, that and he gets into it, and he does that. That's good enough for me. That's all I want to do. Okay. Um, the, the gentleman uh, said, uh, Alfred, uh, that uh, older people can't get into this uh, or, or don't understand it or, uh, or whatever. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, I went through the whole routine. I'm, I'm a lot older than probably any... Well, I see a couple old faces in here. Uh, Were you a flower child? I was a bohemian, a beatnik, a hippie. I own an art gallery now, and some of these groups have played in my space. Mm -hmm. And these kids are, you know, may, I might not like some of the music they play, but as far as people, I think they're fine. There's no smoking in my place, there's no alcohol, there's no drugs. We've had the police come in 
and they walked out smiling. All right. So we're going to have to deal with the perception of the general public, however wrong, that there are violent roots to punk and that violence runs through it. And I'll let you think about that while we take this break, and we'll be back to take your calls at 723-5124 right after this. <laughs> Stand up and, uh, you know, what, okay, what, what values do you hold, or, or, or is uh, punk, from your point of view, a, a negation of all values? Well, well, first I'd like to say my name's not really Sid. <laughs> it's just a joke. Um, I don't like to think of uh, categorizing people as, like, being punk and being this or being that. I just feel like I want to do whatever I want to do, and... If I wake up and I, and I say, well, this is what I want to do today, I just, I'm hoping that people aren't going to say, well, he's punk, or he's doing this with his life, or can't you see that he's destroying himself? Or I'm just going to say I'm going to do what I want to do in my life, and hopefully people won't categorize me and say, well, he's a punk, you know, he must like, do okay. sick things and things like that. You know? okay. I just, I'm hoping that I don't get categorized. People just say, well, let's see what's inside his head, see what a good guy he really is. Before we write him off and say, oh, well, he's sick because he has no hair or because he has fluorescent hair or because he has this or that. Okay, but you have to admit, uh, Sid, uh, for the purpose of this program, that you're making an extremely dramatic appearance. And uh, it makes it sometimes difficult to get behind the appearance to the person. Uh, how about giving us a little help? Why, though? Why? Yeah, why does it? Why, well, why do people have to be... Why can't they be more open to uh, new, new things? They seem to have so much culture shock or whatever about the way we, we do things and we just... Okay, what way do you do things? That's one of the things that people are curious about. I, I know the way I do things. I, I like to uh, talk, talk to the kids and, and people who are involved in, in the music and uh, be concerned with helping the other bands and uh, which will help probably give them a future. I think that it's, it's important to uh, work together, like to support each other in what, whatever we may believe in. Kathy, you want to say something? Katie. Um, yes, I'd just like to say that everyone does it, I think, be, well, not does it, you know, like that, that's a really silly um, use of the word. Um, everyone is into their own thing. You know, when, did you go to the marathon and see all those people, you know, all like the running fans, they all wear their Nike jackets and their Nike shoes, and, you know, you go to a tennis match and everyone's garbed out in tennis gear, and football fans, we just, we like, you know, what we like. I don't know why I like it. I've always been an individual. I've always been somebody who hasn't, I, I don't know why I haven't been that way, but I just haven't. It's always ended up that way. And in, in that same respect, I think that, you know, and so I ended up, you know, I guess I am what I am, and I don't know why, but it's, that's the way it is. And okay, but there seems to be, Katie, a, a, a uniform, almost like a running uniform or a tennis uniform. Or exactly. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say we, we all, there are certain ways we do dress. I would not say that anybody here is a clone of anyone else, which is very important. I think, you know, people think there's, you know, a little uniform, but... Did you go to the marathon? Everyone was wearing those Nike jackets. And that's just every, every walk of life. It's the same thing. I live next to three fraternities, and those fraternities act more animalistic and more silly and do more antisocial things and don't get any garbage for it either because they're conforming to the way people think they should act. And they all have their little uniforms, too. Okay, all right. Okay, we're going we're gonna to go into the, the uh, perception of violence. I want to underline the word perception. But first, you had something you wanted to say. Is this, is this supposed to be something like a fad, like preppyism or something? <laughs> no, a fad all. like preppyism. No. Uh, yes. I've been here since 1976. It's not a fad. I don't, you know, you don't go out, I wouldn't go out and buy the punk calendar and the punk date book. And, <laughs> you know. Okay, all right, let's talk about where it came from. It came out of England, right? And the... the, the Okay, there's always been punk rock. If you go back into the 60s, see what it is basically, right? We're talking garage bands, people that just get in a garage, banging out, do it. It's all, it's all from the heart, right? And there's always been garage bands. You can go and find thousands and thousands okay. of records. But I'm, I'm thinking of, of the public perception. It began with Johnny Rotten and yeah. the Sex Pistols and the kinds of things that Sid Vicious was into. These sorts of things uh, seem to run through the movement as a thread. There, there seemed to be violence involved. There seemed to be drugs involved, there was early death involved. Uh, how do you deal with that? But that's the whole thing. Sid is dead. 
who cares about sin? He was a stupid dummy. If he, he killed himself, I mean, my God, you know. I can safely say that all the people, most of the people here I know very well, and all these people are not into ending their lives and don't do destructive things and don't do antisocial things in order. Yeah, I mean, we're not shooting. Hey, nothing. terrific. Dynamite. How many of you have dropped out of school? <laughs> Why? Why would you drop out of school? Be in a band. Be in a band. <laughs> Be in a band. Cool, Who wants to be an engineer? No dice. Okay. All right. So I now they're expelled of a, of a dress code. But I think that's what it is. It's a dress. It's a dress, it's code. A dress code. And I don't think because you dress like you are that you are straight. I think you are straight because that's what you are, and that you are comfortable with that type of dress. I don't think your dress says what you are because I am dressed in a suit doesn't happen to mean that I am straight. I could be on the highest drugs you wanted. Your dress doesn't say what you are. Who you are says what you are. It's what you are inside that's important. It's not what you wear. But you have, people are based on first impressions and that's what's difficult. Yes, let me uh, get over here and give you a chance to answer. Uh, I think you made an eloquent statement earlier about what you were inside. Yeah, see, first off, you know, you don't dress that way, sure, but you've been in a suit for all your life. I mean, you know. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Uh, you don't know that, though. Okay. All right. But all I'm saying is, like, just, I mean, I'm so sick of, like, by, when I was a freshman in high school, I've been dressing like everybody else, you know. You call up kids before a dance, and you say, hey, what are you wearing? You know, are you wearing your Levi's shirt or your, you know, Calvin Klein shirt? And, and you know, that's such, that's such garbage because... Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, one of the reasons I dress the way I dress is just to shock people like you that can't handle the idea of kids having minds of their own and thinking on their own and, you know, call it individualism or call it whatever you want. You know, the reason I first shaved my head was to annoy my dad, you know. <laughs> so, we're in. What we're rebelling against here is the complacency in the American public. I mean, a lot of us would agree that the, the situation, the political situation in America is really precarious. It's very dangerous. And, um... What we're trying to do is shock people out of their complacency and say, look, we're a reflection of the social climate and political climate in this country. And um, they're saying, look, you're not a reflection. You're what's wrong with it. And that's, uh -huh. that's what we're trying okay, to do. Okay, so this is how you deal with your frustrations. In a lot of ways, yeah. Um, just trying to reflect the, the social ills of, of what's going on in America right now. Okay, we'll be back with more right after this break. A little bit later, we can explore, will this lead in that direction? Is it that much of a separatist thing? But right now, I want to listen to some of the messages that you, Paul, and you, Rick, uh, as a part of punk music, are sending out. So let's all listen very carefully, and then we'll talk about that. Time bomb, beat in heads, kill myself, all religion um, sucks. Uh, do you know? Broken bones is about Broken some. bones. Broken. Can I explain something? Sure. Okay, that's a free song. Um, that's about um, some kids who are into punk and uh, they get beat up by people who don't believe that 
you know. It really happened, what they, too. And it's, a, it's, a tr it's a true story. It's actually about a riot at the channel and people who got beaten up at the channel. You know, by yeah. bouncers. Okay, all bouncers. right. But, but to the uninitiated, it sounds like, you know, this is well, okay, this is what's words. happening, this they is what you have to do to defend to yourself. Words. Maybe they would okay. kind of grasp it. All right, we'll, we'll be back with more in just a minute. Let's uh, leave that for the moment. Ed Nihilus, uh, you are co-owner of... Good Times Boston. Good Times Boston, which has co-opted the punk scene and made fashion out of it. And let's take a quick... Whoop, whoop. Well, no, no. It really hasn't, it really hasn't co-opted fashion. What it has is it's an extension of personal expression. Okay. If someone wants to come in and wants to dress themselves in a certain style. New wave. Let's New take a wave. Look. Let's take a look. Right now we have Susie wearing a medieval mini. A medieval and this mini. Is, yes, this is an extension <laughs> of British fashion. It's a lot stronger in Britain. The uh, new romantic wave, the new romantic idea is not very strong in Boston. She should be wearing her hair in a page boy, right? Could be. Then we have Sandy. Sandy's wearing the an overstuffed white blouse with knickers. This is sort of like on the Steve Strange and the Adam and the Ant. Looks like a D'Artagnan that she ought to have it. Yeah, a it's Errol Flynn. It's from the New Romance, medieval. And Pearl in a white ruffle blouse with the medallion belt. Oh, this is straight out of the castle, Ed. Straight out of the castle. Now that doesn't, why doesn't that look punk to me? Or is it supposed to be, or new wave, or what? It's really, it's really not punk. It's trendy, it's uh, fashion, it's high fashion. Pay fifty dollars to wear and big money. It's, it's for, for guys to look at you and want to, you know, take you out on a date. It's ridiculous. They want Most of us can't afford clothes like that. All right, you're cut off from school. No. Wait a minute. All right, fine. Where do you go to school? I go to school in Northeast, and I live with my my mother and my family, and I have a great relationship with my mother, and she's behind me all the way. Okay. All right. Listen, we have uh, some other. No, no other brief looks good, yes. Okay, I go to Cambridge Ridge in Latin, and I do not plan to drop out of school. I plan to go on and get a further degree in broadcasting, maybe, maybe, I don't know. And I don't get along with my mother, she can't understand it, but I get along with my father very well, and he's, she's kind of, she got a good job, and she's kind of really joined the mainstream, and she can't understand it, but my father really does understand it. Is he a dropout? <laughs> no, he has two master's degrees, and he understands it very well. You know, he gets some of the magazines, and he wants me, whenever he wants me to play him the records, he really likes the messages they give. Okay. I got to thank you all, believe me, uh, Ed thank and you. Rick and thank Bob you. and this fine audience for, uh, you know, taking some of the masks off the, uh, off the movement and maybe giving all of us, including me, who grew up in the 50s and uh, thought a black leather jacket and motorcycle boots were... Uh, verboten, and then found my own 13-year-old uh, son really relating to the Fonz 20 years later, so that's a good question. We'll be back with a bit more right after this. I got to tell you, though, let me tell you that the Fonz was a much sanitized version of what went on in the 50s. That's weekday.
Tomorrow on Weekday, we'll discuss the newest contraceptive breakthrough and spend time learning about the latest in gynecological care. For a medical update, join us tomorrow morning at 9 for Weekday. <laughs>